let's start with what I wanted to talk about. So I'm, I'm going to go meta here. And meta means that I get to, um, meta means um, uh, I, I want to talk about sort of a, a, a bigger picture thing that we're doing with A to J author. Um, and, you know, uh, maybe 10 minutes or so, and, and, and maybe 15 minutes, I want to show you sort of a, an approach that we're sort of following. Um, nothing set in stone here because because we're always trying to understand you know the best way to do things but this is sort of a before you start thinking in flow charts idea um, uh, you know the the projects that you can do with a to j author come to you in all sorts of ways right somebody shows up with a with a form and says automate that um, somebody says we have a we have a we have a problem with this population of people like the the uh, the eviction problem that's come up as a result of covid and we want to both uh, what's the word educate people explain to them their rights and maybe give them the option to to generate the, the letter that they would send to their landlord um, and we and we and we don't understand the problem very well because it's brand new you know the new new law or new uh, regulations have come out about it um, or, or maybe it's another project where you're working with, with a court and they're like, well, we have this collection of things that people come into the courthouse for and we want to prioritize them and then decide which one we're going to do first because you do it by population or by, you know, uh, what, what people think is the biggest problem to solve first. Anyhow, um, so, so how, do you, how do you start nailing that down in, into an actual guided interview? Well, guided interviews, as you well know, are, are flowcharts, essentially. Um, that's the metaphor that not just us, I mean, this is a picture from from A, from a to J4, the Flash version, from 15 years ago or something like that. Um, but but it seems as though everybody in the world, and, and I, mean, I mean beyond just law, in, 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 in all kinds of areas uh, in our society, we're starting to be asked to think in terms of flowcharts or decision trees or or use that sort of metaphor, right? They're everywhere. Um, sometimes they're explicit. And what I mean by that is um, even in like a Hello Divorce, which is a wonderful divorce app, you know, right on their page, they have a, they, they've, they've made plain the, here, here's your process flowchart for what's going to happen as you work through your divorce in, in California. You know, and, and this is intended to, to for people, it's a map, right? People are trying to find their way through a complicated system and find that. Now, there's more than, not so recently, but I've just seen an awful lot of it. There's a, there's a whole bunch of now venture capitals starting up with generalizable tools, not specific to the legal uh, space or not even specific to the access to justice space, that are uh, drag and drop expert knowledge decision modules. This one's called Brighter. I think they're out of Australia. Maybe they're out of Austria. Oh my gosh, I've forgotten. But but look at some of the words that they use: visual editor, rapid prototyping, visual debugging, one-click deployment. And you can see from the picture that I just grabbed from the front of the web page, it's a it's a flowchart that's asking a question and branching based on the the, the choices to those questions. Um, more familiar maybe to this crowd is uh, Neota, right? Neota's been around forever. Um, and, and all of these are calling themselves, there's a new word, no code, right? Um, Yoda has now adopted the word no code. I'm glad they did because ever because they've been doing this almost as long as we've been doing A to J author, um, selling into the law firm space. Um, again, look at the wording, rapidly build and prototype applications, single platform for automation, capture your data, apply use cases. Um, so there's a lot of similarity even in the language. Um, another one is called uh, Bubble.io. Oops, I forgot to grab their logo. But uh, they have a slightly different metaphor. It's more of a timeline. But uh, I watched the video and I didn't grab a, 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 a complex enough picture. But, but you see this thing. It's a, it, in this case, it's a flowchart, but it just happens to be a flowchart that's uh, horizontal rather than vertical um, when, when you're building. But you can see the, the, the when button sign up is clicked then sign user up, you know, and when they respond to email, send email and so on. Uh, again, with the wording, build any web app with no code. Bubble lets you create interactive multi-user apps for desktop and mobile web browsers. So, you know, 
so, so the things that we've been doing with hot docs and A to J and uh, for that matter, uh, lately with the uh, community lawyer, doc assemble, you know, uh, no code development. Um, and matter of fact, that was the original goals of A to J author. Let me drop over to my A to J author. One of the original goals of AJ Author was we wanted to be able to scale up lots of people automating court forms, and we knew that the the bottleneck was programmers, right? They're too expensive, they're too slow. If every single form automation had to be coded from scratch, and so we put this layer of abstraction on top of it called A to J Author, in which instead of having to have a programmer do things, you could have someone with less programming skills and hopefully more subject or, or subject domain or uh, subject matter expertise actually sit in the tool. In other words, we could train a lawyer in a couple of hours how to do this. Um, and, and, and they, and by virtue of the fact that it was easy enough to do, they would be the ones building them. Um, and so there was less, uh, you know, so it was less expensive. Interesting thought there, right? Uh, lawyers aren't that aren't, aren't inexpensive, but at least they were less expensive if uh, if 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 uh, if you don't if you can't afford programmers. Or maybe I'm thinking in terms of uh, legal aid attorneys who are not considered expensive, although they're valuable certainly. Um, but but the idea being that the, if the subject matter expert is closer to the automation, then they will. Uh, what's the word? Internalize the problem space better, uh, which is a, a sort of a legal design concept, right? We want them to be, wow, I can't put this up there, you know, which a programmer would say, well, this will work. But a, but a lawyer would say, wow, I can't ask the question this way. You know, I've dealt with clients and they always get confused when I ask the question this way. So so the level of abstraction goal here is, is what no code is going for. You know, you don't have to have programming teams or development environments or things. Um, you're working at it at a level of abstraction. Now, you give up some things, right? You give up very small little, you know, you, you can't decide what the interface looks like. Um, you can't decide, you can't write too much. Um, you can't do things that the no-code platform doesn't do. Um, and, and that often can run into a problem. Uh, with DocAssemble, right, it's a little different. You can if you want learn Python or YAML and, and dive into the code and make it. But when you step outside of the, of the abstractive platform, you run into the problem of the next guy coming along and, and, and then you've just got code that they've got to maintain. And the goal here was to avoid having uh, unmaintainable or difficult to maintain code, generally speaking. All right, so all that's just uh, preliminary throat clearing for me to say that um, um, I want I want to show you what I how how we think about this or where we're sort of going with this. And it all revolves around um, um, the mapper. Uh, let me let me pull up. Let me start by pulling up like a really a really uh, scary one, just to make sure that you understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going to open up this divorce curated experience. Hit the map button. This should take a moment. And uh, if I zoom out. Do, 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 do. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So 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 the this was built uh, before the mapper and uh, the old mapper in A to J six. Wow, we don't say A to J six. The old mapper in A to J author. Um, you know what did what didn't do a very good job. Um, the one in A to J four did a did an even better job because it was written, written in Flash. And when we moved the JavaScript, we lost some capabilities. Well, we've gained most of those capabilities. Actually, all of those capabilities back. Um, and everything's just stacked on top of each other. But this has got an auto cleanup button. So I press that, it's gonna go work its way through and it automatically stacks all of the questions. So there's one box per question. I zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. And it color codes them by steps. And if I close all my steps here, you can see the color coding going on here, right? The pale yellow, the next one, the chartreuse or puce or Fuchsia, I don't even know what these colors are. Um, all correspond to uh, these things. And there's little lines showing that there's that that if you click the second button on this page, it will go to step three and so on and so on and so forth. And so the thinking here is that this is an easier way for you to have a mental model of, of, of walking your way through a guided interview and that you should do 
I mean, our goal is that that authors will 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 work through two levels of abstraction, and the first one will be that this high level one of the path, and the second one is the actual questions, and that you can dive in and and, and pull out, you know, as needed. So let me let me let me do like a little five minute version of that of what I just said, and see if that makes any sense. So I'm going to go to interviews. I'm going to create a blank interview. And if I just show the map on that, it's you know not much to see because it's um, it's the sample interview, right? So the first thing that I do when I'm working on a project is I try to think of well, what are the big steps, um, you know, and 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 I make and I make and I and I build all of my steps for that. So so step one, I might, it might be something like um, oh, let's go into the steps here and make sure I've got all my steps set up, right? Step one, I don't want to sign that says access to justice. I might say, you know, because I'm thinking in terms of the user, um, you know, are you in the right? No, wait, I'm going to do like an introduction. Sorry. You know, introduction. Whoops. An introduction. You know, for step two, I'm going to, I'm going to ask them. The whole step is all about, you know, are you in the right place? And why would I ask that as a, as a whole step? Because I don't want to waste their time, right? So I might lift a bunch of qualifying or disqualifying questions right up to the front to make sure that they're in the right place. Then I'm going to do things like, um, you know, name and address stuff, you know, uh, financial information. I'm I'm making up sort of a, 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 a an example here, financial information. Even that's financial information. Um, you know, how much money do you have? I don't know that I would do it exactly that way, but I'm illustrating a point here. I need six steps for my example here. You know, you know, do you qualify? You know, and then uh, more information to gather. Oh, I need one more step here. Seven. And then we'll say uh, we're done. And this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six. Because for programmers, we start with step zero. All right. You look at the map, it hasn't changed any because why? I haven't added any questions. But that's what I want to do now in the mapper is, is I want to start thinking in terms of, of, of what – how many how many questions how many pages am I going to need? And so something like introduction, you know, I probably only need one. So you know, we've got a one introduction, and it's got the name and avatar choices in there. Great, we'll leave that there. All right. Um, then the steps is: uh, Are you in the right place? Are are you in the right place? And and I'm going to say I'm going to say that maybe there's like. Um, Three questions that I need to add there, you know, and then and, and then here's where I can I can I can get a, at least another step. I can double click on that, and I can drill down into the name of the of the of the things. And since this is in the are you in the right place, you know, we'll say uh, right place uh, one. We'll say uh, I'm going to go two dash right place. Two, probably don't. That's probably redundant. I like to put numbers in front of my page names because because then it forces the. And this is a, an old habit from. What, I'll explain in a second. Three dash right place three. Probably don't need that. Like I said, but if you, as you well know, on the pages, right, it sorts it by uh, the names of the pages. But because this is a two dimensional list, it cannot show. Uh, the branches like the map does. So what I'm essentially saying is we're going to try to replace the pages page entirely with the map page because uh, then you've got a more, um, you know, a picture in your head of how that works. Now what's missing here is, right, there's no links between these, but with the mapper, I can just draw a line between that and I can just draw a line between that. And now um, I've actually got a running guided interview you know that that will take me from step one to step two. Question one, two, three. There's question four, five, six. You know, and and uh, and I can continue to build on that 
by by thinking in terms of um well what's step what was step two i can't remember um yeah name and address let's pretend that i didn't ask well i didn't ask uh the, i did ask the name before but let's let's say i need um at least a page or two for name and address and i'm one of those i'm one of those big fans of of um uh, uh of asking literally one one question per page, um, and our studies, and although these studies do go back a bit, address info two, you know, like address one, line one, line two, and so on. Our, our studies go go from from way back showed us that that people familiar with the web and programmers and such you know, want everything on one page and they mentally work their way through all the empty little blocks that are on the screen. You know, they scroll and, and type and scroll and type and scroll and type. Um, and they stop and get hung up or whatever if the question is more than just, you know, what's your name and address? What if it's something like, um, how much money do you make a, a month, right? And so maybe you know or have in your head your, your salary, your annual salary. Um, but you don't think of it in terms of well, how much do I get paid every month? I gotta, I gotta either do math in my head, divide by twelve, or I have to go look at my pay stub or something like that. Or maybe it's an even harder question because it has some nuance to it in a legal sense, right? Um, how many people are you responsible for in your household? Now, I probably wouldn't ask a question in that way in a guided interview, right? You, you, but what you, what you want to know is how many, how many kids do they have? Do they have any grandparents or uncles or nieces and nephews that they're responsible for? Um, and so that might actually be something that you've got to you've got to ask the question in a way that gets an accurate answer. Um, and so what we found is we we break those down. So instead of them getting stuck in a long list where where all the questions are bundled together, uh, you you put each question onto its own page. And if it's simple, they fill it out and they move on fast. And there's a sense of accomplishment of progress in doing that. And if it's complicated, well, then they're not distracted by all the stuff above and below on the page. Um, and you can go into as much detail, you know, explaining why this is an important question to get correct and stuff like that. Um, last thing I wanted to show, or one of the last things was, you know, I can, I can draw from the bottom of, here, I'll zoom out draw from the bottom of this and point to the top of this and now i've got it going from step two over to step three all right so the point the point here is that you're 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 going to build the you know notice i haven't typed any text into any of the questions so you know i want to i run a preview of this and all i get is the default text right this is the introduction this was because it was a blank interview I'll just fill some stuff in because those are required. You choose your avatar. I'll choose text of my first question goes here, my text. As you can see, I'm just sort of moving. I mean, I really couldn't tell what was going on there because um, I didn't have the map view up. But all I did was walk my way through all of these steps very quickly. But if you do this, if you do it this way, at, the, at this level of abstraction, you have a, a running interview. And you can talk to your subject matter expert and say, so we're going to ask this bundle of questions. Don't worry about the exact wording just yet. And then we're going to come to a decision point and branch, correct? You know, if they make more than $15,000, then they go off one way because they don't qualify. And if they make less than $15,000, they go off another way because they do qualify. Um, and those those could be graphically illustrated in, in the in the decision tree. And, and then the the actual text, which is which is vitally important to get correct and and hard to get correct, especially when you're talking about doing um, plain language stuff. Um, but you you've chunked the problem into into two levels of abstraction: the high level abstraction, which is you know do the map first, and the low level one, that is the the detailed little things. The second thing that I found is before you plunge in and start creating um, uh, sorry, start creating buttons and text fields in uh, this monstrosity of a page, which is the page editing page. 
And this is something uh, we, we definitely want to do. We want to redesign. Um, it's, it's, you know, after, after, you know, I use it for so long, I'm familiar with it, but for new folks, yeah, there's just too much scrolling and too much, you know, uh, it, it all, all the, all the, all the sections look, look similar. So I always have to think and before I stop, I'm looking for the buttons, I'm looking for the fields, I'm looking for the advanced logic and stuff. We're aware of that and working on solutions with that. But before I even get to this point, I know I'm going to be needing to put stuff into, uh, I'm going to be collecting data from people and I want to put it into a box. The box is, is a variable. And so before I'll even start editing individual ones, I'll go into the variables tab um, or, or even better, outside of it all, I'll open up Notepad, you know, and I'll, and I'll do a little exercise before I did any of this and just say, well, what are all the little bits of information I'm going to gather and what am I going to call them? In other words, I'm going to try to make those variable naming decisions here, you know, client first name, client last name, client address, uh, so on and so forth. Like, you know, income, I need to know their, their job income, their alimony income, their social security, I need to know their expenses. All those things that, um, you know, that might or might not be in the form that I know I'm going to ask about, I'm going to pre-write out in, a, in, in Notepad. And I'm in Notepad because if I do it in Word and I cut and paste, I sometimes get into trouble, right, with hidden characters and stuff. It's a nice, another little tip. You know, so I can always just copy this stuff and, and go in and make sure that there's a variable. Yeah, let's get rid of that. And make sure that I've created a, a variable for that. You know, called client first name. It's text. It's not multiple values. You know, and, and and I know none of you like to do this, and I don't like to either. But if I'm a smart guy and I've got a variable that's that has any sort of ambiguity in it, a well, client first name doesn't have any ambiguity. But let's say it has, it does. You know, I would, I would, I would even put in that. You know, uh, this information is required by statute. And if I was even better, you know, I would put in a, you know, a URL to, you know, find the, to the statute where where I've got that information. And that's because I don't, I am not going to own this guided interview for its entire life. Somebody else is going to come along and want to update it and they're going to wonder why i'm collecting information that five years ago was you know the legislature changed or somebody decided it didn't have to be collected anymore or something and if and if and if you explicitly include those those uh those stray thoughts as you're creating your variables you know each time then that information is gathered and collected and when they pull up the guided interview, they can look at the full report, and and those and that information is contained in there. Where is it? There it is. This information is required by statute. All right. So that's what I got. That's all I got on um uh, on on the before you start. You know, to recap, you know, um, the mapper is our is is where we see a lot more development happening, making this even more capable. So that you're working at a level of abstraction that's that's not just uh, the, the lists of pages and, um, and 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 the page editing screen, which is where you spend almost all your time right now, right? Making sure that there's a you know a destination. This is how you create links right now. You you set a destination by choosing you know another another page, and instead you know in the map. Yeah, see, I just broke that. Instead, in the map, that would be this guy. So where I could just go get rid of that and just say, no, that's supposed to go there. Um, theoretically, a lot easier to think through. So that's 28 minutes of me talking. If anybody has any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. So uh, you can either uh, raise your hand or you can just uh, unmute yourself and talk because I've uh, unmuted you. <laughs> 